Composition is probably one of the most important things to learn when it comes to photography. A great photographer will understand and know where to place what in a photo. One of the most popular tools for composition is called the rule of thirds and is widely used amongst beginners who are just starting out in photography. But if you ever started cropping in Lightroom and pressed the O key, you would quickly realize the rule of thirds is only scratching the surface of tools available for composition. Now many of them are pretty straightforward with the simple idea of having lines match up together. But one of the compositional tools that I could never seem to wrap my head around was the spiral, also known as the golden spiral. Why was this a compositional tool and how the hell do I use it? The golden spiral comes from the Fibonacci sequence. The way that it works is that each number is the sum of the two preceding numbers, starting with 0 and 1. So 0 plus 1 would be 1, 1 plus 1 would be 2, 1 plus 2 would be 3, 2 plus 3 would be 5, and so on. Now by using squares whose side lengths are Fibonacci numbers and by drawing circular arcs connecting the opposite corners of the squares, we can create the golden spiral. Now there are many videos on YouTube that explain the meaning of the Fibonacci sequence, so I won't go too deep into it. Just note that the golden spiral comes from a sequence of numbers. Now before understanding the golden spiral, I wanted to know if I had used it in some of my previous work without knowing it. And funnily enough, I had. These are some of my favorite photos of last year and most of these were composed by intuition. But what I ended up realizing was that many of these photos align perfectly with the golden spiral. In this one you can see the alignment with the building leading up to the golden sky on top. I remember shooting this and expecting it to be a bus just to later on admiring the composition. In this one the mountainside aligns perfectly with the golden spiral and the photographer is perfectly centered in it. In this astral pic the Milky Way and the photographer align. In this one the chair and the light align. And in this landscape the bottom section aligns perfectly with the top of the mountain. Now keep in mind that with all of these pictures I wasn't composing with the golden spiral in mind. All of these shots were composed by intuition. So what's going on? Why am I using the golden spiral by accident? And coincidentally it's because the golden spiral is actually very similar to the previously mentioned rule of thirds. Some would even say that the rule of thirds was based off the golden spiral. If we go back to some of these pictures, the rule of thirds also applies to them. So what's the point of the golden spiral and how do I apply it? So the thing with the golden spiral is that there are many ways to apply it. The first would be to have leading lines that follow the spiral and having your subject in the center of the spiral. This is the more straightforward way of using it and is usually what people think when they think of the golden spiral. The second way to apply it is by splitting your picture into two sections, but instead of splitting in the middle, you would split with a ratio of 1.618 or phi as it's called, with a smaller half having the subject in the middle of the spiral. Funnily enough, there's a second rule of thirds grid called the phi grid that uses the golden ratio. So you could also just use that instead. A good way to find out if you did it correctly is by removing the big half of the image, as the little half still applies the golden ratio. So by removing the bigger half, you would still have an acceptable image. The last way to use it would be to literally use it as the rule of thirds, but placing the subject in the middle of the spiral. This is why you will sometimes accidentally use the golden spiral. Because although the spiral and the rule of thirds don't match together, both of them are pretty close to each other. Now you may ask if you can apply it in every image, and the answer is no. This compositional technique doesn't work with every photo. Not every photo should apply the golden spiral. Many photos will require different adjustments and different ways of composing. This photo, for example, uses symmetry and is better suited for the diagonals. This photo is composed with the golden triangles. This one has leading lines that lead to the middle, and this photo uses the golden ratio but doesn't work with the golden spiral. I think it's safe to assume that the golden spiral can be a very interesting choice when it comes to composition. With that being said, I'm not saying that you should use the golden spiral in every photograph, as many photos will require different compositional tools. But I think the real takeaway of this video is to get more compositional tools in your arsenal to get better imagery.